Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're in the offices of President of Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Mirta Martin, as we congratulate on behalf of Jeff and me, Congratulations, Madam President, on uh, being the ninth president of Fort Hayes State University. The ninth keeper of the light. Thank and, you. And I was so impressed by your reference to a good friend of mine, Dr. James Forsythe, who wrote the 100 centennial uh, history of Fort mm -hmm. Hayes State University, and your reference to him, that was much appreciated. Well, when, um, when I was first um, appointed president uh, back in May, uh, Deborah Prideau shared with me a copy of the book, which I readily read. And, um, you know, there were so many things that were just as true then as they, they are today. Mm -hmm. And the metaphor of the lighthouse and the plains coming from Virginia with the sea, mm -hmm. I found very intriguing, but yet so apropos. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought, this is something that that beacon of hope, that 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 really is what the United States is all about, is representative of what Fort Hay State is all about, the beacon of hope, that beacon of education, that lighthouse, that attracts people from throughout and and shines the way home, and um, and so I am home, and I'm thankful to be the ninth keeper of the light. It was a nice metaphor. It really Thank was. You. Did the dreams of that little girl growing up <laughs> include a university presidency? Um, not of the little girl, but I think of the young adult. I think once I came to this country and, and I started in the banking industry, I thought, you know, one day I want to be in a position where I can impact lives. It's not about the title. It really isn't. Uh, and that's what I say to, to our family here at Fort Hayes. Uh, and that's why I, I always say to you, call me Mirta, not President, because <laughs> President is a title. Doctor is a title. At the end of the day, we're people. And each one of us has a job to do to support our students. That's why we're here. And our jobs may be different, but each job it's dependent upon each other. It's, it's like a thread. You know, each one of us are threads, and when we put those threads together, we create a beautiful tapestry. And it's that tapestry that's going to educate our students. And so becoming a president affords me the opportunity to impact new beginnings and to add a little grain of salt, hopefully, to what I know one day will become a mighty mountain and that Maori mountain is each of their students. Well, maybe after a decade or so, we might get to be able to get to the point of Myrta, but for <laughs> right now, it's going to be President <laughs> Martin, if you don't. <laughs> All right, since last we visited, um, you took a media tour. Yes, sir. Tell us a little about your media tour. It was an incredible <laughs> experience. Um, let's see, 13 cities, 30 stops in three days. Oh my. So to say that we were pedal to the metal <laughs> would be an understatement. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a wonderful opportunity because I got to meet so many people throughout the state. I got to see the state firsthand very quickly, but I still now, I understand the geography. Mm -hmm. I'm a visual person, so I could say, okay, so this is where this is. And I got to put faces with the names of people that up to that point have been calling me. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the beauty of it, that you know, you and I have created a relationship and, it, and it's been wonderful, but we've been able to see each other, just like with Jeff. Mm -hmm. you know. But there's many throughout the state, whether it's in Goodland or, or in Colby or in Wichita, that call me, and I hadn't been able to do that. And now when I speak to these people, their family, I can see their faces, and, and that was the beauty of it. I also had a, the opportunity to meet alumni from, Uni from throughout mm -hmm. Kansas. and. They're the core of the body of Fort Hay State University, and they're so willing to do whatever it takes. And as you heard in my inauguration, um, inaugural speech, only they can tell the real story 
about Fort Hay State University because they sat in that chair. They had that professor. They remember when it snowed or they remember the tree lighting ceremony. Mm -hmm. They remember being a freshman at WIST. And those are memories that you can impart to the next generation that gets them to come here, that gets them to make Fort Hay State University the destination of choice. So it was a wonderful experience. I look forward to repeating it next year. I was going to say, are you yeah. going back for absolutely. round two? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And speaking of the next round, uh, since we visited last, you also made the trip to China I with did. the entourage. Talk about that experience. Um, that was an eye-opening experience. It was, um, you know, I've, I've traveled much of the world, uh, primarily though in, in Europe, Central and South America, but I've never been to the Middle East and I've never mm -hmm. been to China. And it was a, a very um, strong visual representation of a country that is the next world power. Um, and many of the things we knew, that I knew, actually became very evident. For example, I knew that if you're 55 years old and you're a female, that you have to retire. I knew that if you're 60 and you're a man, you have to retire. But where it came home was when you drove through the streets and you saw these masses, and I mean masses of people, but they were young. I mean, they were 10 and 12 and 20 and 30 and 40. I mean, I felt like I was 101, <laughs> you know? Uh, because that's, that. it's a very, it's 1.4 billion people mm -hmm. and they're all very young who's out on the street because they are working, mm -hmm. you know? People our age wouldn't be out there working. And and the other thing that is it's very realistic is the fact that there are more English-speaking Chinese under the age of 40 than there are English-speaking people in the world, okay? That is, as a parent of a 20-year-old, as a president of a forward-thinking, world-ready university, as that individual who's been entrusted with all of these students here, it's a very frightening rear. It, it just is, it's a very, very frightening visual representation of what our children, of what the next generation of leaders are going to be facing. And it, it gave me the resolve to come back. And, and if you remember, I, I, I actually added the phrase in the inaugural speech that said, it's one thing to say we're world ready, it's another one to be world ready. I'm going to challenge our faculty to begin to explore how we can teach our children to be world ready. Those students in China are f completely fluent in English. They know how to do business with the West. Our students are not fluent in Chinese and they do not know how to do business with the East. American higher education will need to wake up because we are preparing our students to do business with ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and we do it very well. The challenge is that the world is now an oyster mm -hmm. and we need to prepare our, our students to do business in a global marketplace. So higher education needs to change. And Fort Hay State University is going to revolutionize higher education with the support of our talented faculty and our, our dedicated staff. If you would, uh, President Martin, uh, follow up for us on the uh, Dodge City Community College uh, event. Uh, are we kind of on hold, perhaps? What do you see as the future? Uh, is it now the next move, perhaps, up to DC3? It's always been up to DC3, the next move. Um, as I've shared with you, they invited Fort Hay State University to come down for a merger. And as I've shared with you and others before, I believe that morally it's the right thing to do. I think that the, the citizens of southwestern Kansas ought to have access to an affordable, accessible, superb education. 
um, and we are superbly positioned to be that provider of choice because of our closeness to Dodge City Community College and to Dodge City. But we have also always said that it was their decision, and I've always also said that it's a business decision at the end of the day. It needs to make sense for us, for Fort Hay State University, as it needs to make sense for Dodge City Community College. Um, we stand ready to support the people of Dodge City and of the region in affording them through our virtual college uh, and education. Um, but when and if they're ready to come back to the table, we're certainly ready to come back to the table to discuss and to explore ways in which perhaps we could unite. Um, so it has been and will always be their decision and they chose at this time not to go forward and Fort Hay State University and I honor that decision. Seems to me like using a phrase of uh, Ed Hammond's, uh, it's a win-win situation for yes. both Fort Hay State and Dodge City Community College. And I yet think that, it is. It actually transpires. I think it is, but as with anything, the devil is in the detail, and, and we've got to make decisions based on fact, not based on assumptions or fears. And I, again, I, I'll repeat it. <clears throat> Dodge City asked us to come in, and we've always said that as long as they wanted us there, we would be at the table. They changed their mind, and I honor that decision. I'm not going to question it. Uh, I am not a citizen of Dodge City. They have an elected representative board. That board made the decision, and I have to honor it, and I do. You accompanied some students to what's called the National BU Hackathon in yes. Redmond, Washington, uh, sponsored by Microsoft, and accompanying those students uh, along with a follow-up of that, I have to tell you a little sidelight here. We met a couple of young ladies from uh, Leadership uh, 310, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them, uh, uh, Lindsay, uh, approached you in the union, I believe she said the story mm -hmm. was, and just really took the leap asking you to address the Leadership 310 mm -hmm. conference, which is coming up uh, with uh, women and That's girls, right. uh, sponsored by the Girl Scouts. And she was so excited that you not only uh, cleared time, but made time to be able to address these young ladies. And what excitement that these uh, Sarah and Lindsay showed in, here's the president willing to take the time, make the time to do the keynote address. Well, you know, I get up every morning because of our students. They're, they're, they're what recharge my batteries each and every day. They're, they're the reason that I'm here. Uh, I just, uh, and that's what faculty and that's what staff and that's what anybody who works at a university ought to think. I mean, uh, this is not a job, this is a passion, this, this is an adventure, this is the opportunity to get up every morning and to be among the next generation of leaders. It's just second to none. And, and so the, 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 the students charge up my batteries and any opportunity that I get to be with them is an opportunity that, that I get. So I'm very honored that students actually do stop me and say, would you come to speak here? I've, I've gone to speak at several classrooms already. Um, they, they stop me and it's like, would you, do you want to walk for the walkathon or do you want to <laughs> do this or do you want to do the other one? It's like, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I will always make time. The, the paperwork can be done at 2 a.m. in the morning. That, that, that's fine. Um, being with the students is first, is second, and it's always. So I'm very honored that they would um, entrust me with, uh, and they would trust me to come up to me to say, would you please? And, and being with them is, is, being with students is the highlight of my day. Being with faculty, being with staff, being in, in our family mm -hmm. is the highlight of my day. Being stuck in this office is not the highlight of my day. <laughs> Visiting so, with you is, but in this office, no. <laughs> so we can, uh, we can look for more from the Energizer more Bunny and more, there. And more and more and more and <laughs> more. I, I plan, you know, whether it's the men's soccer and the women's soccer, I was there, whether it was the volleyball or the football game, whether it's now the women's basketball or the men's mm -hmm. basketball, if I am around, I'm going to be there because that's why I'm here, to be part of them. And 
I want them to be part of my life. That's why I came. So, you know, and the hackathon was just another part of being able to support the students in something that showcased to them and gave them confidence to understand that they had the ability and they had the intellect to succeed. Um, we were chosen one of 25 universities across the United States of over 3,000 universities to compete in this Microsoft hackathon. The, the Microsoft and um, BU people gave uh, a challenge question and everybody, it was at midnight and all of these kids the students were up with their advisors and were all emailing at you know, 1, 2 a.m. in the morning because the questions were coming in and we wanted to make sure that we were there to get it. And finally, I remember writing um, to Melissa, who's the chair of the informatics department, and Dimitri, who's the advisor, and say, OK, guys, it's 2 a.m. in the morning. we got to get a life. Let's get to bed now. <laughs> you know, uh, And the kids were up. And this was over and above their studies over and above, the fact that they had to work over and above their exams. This was time that they had to dedicate to do to themselves. And so the wonderful story behind this is that they believed in themselves, and they made the cut from 25 to 12. And so it was an all expense made, paid to Microsoft headquarters in Washington. These students just radiated with just excitement. And how could I not go to support them? You know, so, so I did. And um, it, that was, you know, the month of November has been a blur because I, I had three days of the, of the media tour, came back at midnight, left the next morning to go to China, w was gone, came on Friday night to be here for senior weekend for the students for the football team. I had given them my word that I would be here and nothing was going to keep me, not even the airlines were going to keep me from being here. Um, even if I had to road a boat from China, I was going to be here. So I was here for that weekend, which was wonderful. Um, then I uh, was here, I guess, on Monday, left for, the, for Washington State for the hackathon. On Tuesday, was there, came back that weekend then was here on Monday, then went to Topeka for the Regents meeting, came back, and here we were, inauguration. But I was not going to miss that hackathon because those kids worked so hard. And you know, we've spoken about it often, and that was what brought me here, that pioneer work ethic. I've heard it from employers throughout Kansas and throughout the United States who I meet who say, I don't ever have to worry about your students because they have a work ethic that's second to none. That came loud and clear from the people at Microsoft. Our students went into Microsoft. Our students, when Microsoft was until 10 o'clock at night that they were allowed to be there, they asked whether they could stay late to continue to work. Microsoft said yes. So we shift, we send another bus to pick him up. They were there at 11.30 at night, still working on their presentation. Microsoft opened at 8. They were there at 7 a.m. in the morning working on their presentation, and they brought it home. And, you know, whether they had gotten first, second, third, twelfth, they were winners because they showcased what they were made out of. They were men and women of character, of a strong pioneer work effort that ethic came through and that's what those people recognized. People came up to me and they said, you know, they were the last ones here and the first one here. We didn't see that. And so they brought it home. And so they brought home the silver and I am so proud of them. And more importantly, because they showcased to the world what hard work is and means and what can be done and achieved through dedication, through sacrifice, through attention to detail. And um, it gave them the confidence to understand what I already knew, that they had the ability and the intellect to climb to the highest mountain. And they did. And every single student at Fort Hay State University has that ability, has that intellect, has that capacity. And we're going to get them there, all of us, the faculty, the staff, and this administration. President Mira, Mirta Martin. Fort Hayes State University, the ninth president. We'll have more with President Martin in a moment. This is Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. 
Our community connection from Eagle Community Television involves area events and community people that we hope you'll meet, including from the President's Office at Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Mirta Martin. Well, thank you so very much for being here, and I look forward to welcoming you each month as we share with our community all the wonderful new beginnings that are taking place at Fort Hayes State University. Fort Hayes State University and others from our community connection. Thanks for watching Eagle Community Television. Welcome back to Community Connection with President Mirta Martin from Fort Hayes State University. We're in the President's office as we talk about the Power of One Scholarship. Give us the update, could you? The update is uh, bright uh, thanks to the generosity of uh, the community, the alumni, um, the industry leaders. Um, as you know, uh, when Dr. Hammond chose to retire, um, the, they decided that they were going to do a scholarship to celebrate his accomplishments at Fort Hay State. And so the Power of One Scholarship was designed to bring attention to that which is most needed, which is meeting the needs of our students, of our next generation of leaders. And so um, a goal of $8 million was set, and that goal was achieved early in July when I became president. And so we stretched that goal to, 11, to, to $12 million, and I'm very pleased to report that we have reached um, 1.6 million, 11.6 million dollar mark. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a conference last week that got us to that point. We will have a conference next week that uh, for another major give that will give us, that will get us closer to our goal. Um, but we still have four weeks to go. Mm -hmm. We still have not met the goal of 12 million dollars. And you know, while the million dollar gifts and the 10 million dollar mm -hmm. gifts are wonderful, the $1 gifts are appreciated, the $5 gifts are appreciated, the $10 gifts are appreciated. Um, uh, as you may know, and I think you do, I used to be in Tip, Tim Chapman's role in a previous life uh, doing um, what I call French racing because it's not fun racing, it's French racing. And I would bring it down to the lowest common denominator and that is, you know, would you be willing to give up one cup of coffee a day to educate a, st a student because two dollars and fifty cents less than a co coffee a day actually these days <laughs> okay times 365 days a year mm -hmm. it's about a thousand dollars a thousand dollars goes so far for our students mm -hmm. makes all the difference in the world and so again while the large gifts are great uh, it's the two dollar gifts that throughout time make just as much as different. And so I want to thank those who give the $2, those who give the $5, those who give the $10, because it's appreciated. It's needed. Our students need it. Uh, without the support of our communities, of our alumni, of our faculty, of our staff who give generously, um, our students wouldn't have an opportunity. And, and our role is to ensure that those leaders have an accessible, and an affordable education. And through the Power of One Scholarship, we're going to make sure that they and many others have access to that wonderful dream that I'm living. The uh, inauguration uh, event, Friday, November 21st, at Gross Memorial Coliseum, uh, various numbers between 12 and 1,500 people mm -hmm. attended uh, with uh, the uh, uh, proceedings being online thanks to the informatics department which did a terrific job. They did we wonderful. Were able to watch it, it online right. and could see the close-ups and could see all of the things that were taking place um, including the unfortunate uh, situation with Dave Storer mm -hmm. but Dave is okay. Dave is wonderful you know it, he scared the living daylights out of me because I didn't know the proverbial rest of the story. Um, I understand that um, he fainted at his wedding, so I'm in good company. The fact that he fainted at his wedding and fainted at the inauguration means that he feels very comfortable with me in being able to do that, but he's, he's perfectly fine. I called him on, I, I kept trying to reach him, and, and I didn't have his phone number. Finally, uh, Jeff Briggs shared with me his cell number. I called him on, on Sunday, and, I, and, um, and he said, oh, no, I was sitting in the back listening to your speech. And it's like, well, gee, thanks. <laughs> Here I am worried for you. But no, thank God he's, he's fine. And I thank all of um, the community members who email uh, wondering and, and concern for his well-being. But he's great. 
and I'm very honored that, you know, it took an awful lot out of him to get up on that stage, mm -hmm. and I'm very thankful to him to do that because it meant the world to me to have Dave at my side. He was part of the, the search committee, but also staff are such a critical part of the life of this university. And as the president of, of the, the, the staff, he represented uh, visually what this university, what the staff do for this university. And it, it meant the world to have him at my side as well as all the faculty and the staff who stayed behind the students. There were over 900 of them, you know, and, and the faculty, they just, I saw the video last night and the faculty kept coming and coming and coming in. And again, that was very touching because it was fall break. They could have gone home and they chose to be there. So to the faculty, to the staff, to the students, um, the inauguration was memorable because all of you were there and all of the, the Hayes America community was there and all of the legislators and, you know, even um, the chancellor mm -hmm. of uh, KU was there and Bernadette honored me greatly by joining me. So I'm very thankful to her. A couple of the highlights, of course, the medallion, yes. which President yes. Hammond uh, bestowed, and then the mace itself. Mm -hmm. That was the telling moment, wasn't it, for that, you? That was. Um, you know, I, I, people, uh, after the fact, said, do you remember this? Do you remember that? And I said, no, that, not that, but I remember the other one. But the one thing that was very real to me was when Dr. Hammond placed the mace in my hands. Um, people who know me and have known me for years said, your face changed. But, you know, that maze represents the wisdom of the ages, the academic rigor that we bestow on our students, the power of education. And to, to have it, I still get chills feeling the weight of that wisdom that all those assembled there we're part of. It's not about me, it's about all of us. And that what that's that maze represents the educational influence that we have on our students. And keeping Fort Hayes State the lighthouse on the play. Absolutely. The beacon of hope for all who choose to come here. President Myrta Martin from Fort Hayes State University. Looking forward to another great year with President Martin at Fort Hayes State. And thanks again to our producer, Jeff Durall, our community connection. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.